Hello, science students. I want to share with you some of the mysteries of electrostatics. Uh, in front of me and in, on the screen, you'll see a few things. Uh, the first thing that we'll take a look at here is uh, this hard rubber rod. This is an ebonite rod. Um, it's a harder form of rubber. Uh, this here is fur, animal fur. Um, on this side here is an electroscope uh, with metal leaves in it, little thin sheets of metal, um, very, very thin. Very, They seem to be very delicate. I'm almost afraid to touch them. They're that thin and that, um, I don't know if they're delicate or not, but they're very, very thin. Uh, and then this other object over here is called a, a pith ball electroscope. So there's two electroscopes. There's one over here. This is called a pith ball, and that's what you see hanging here. It's attached to a non-conductive wire, a string. It's just a cotton or wool string so it doesn't conduct electricity. It's a very lightweight little piece of styrofoam or polystyrene, little piece of foam. Uh, and it's just attached to a little metal rod. So it's not, um, it's a nice one, but you could make a, a pretty straightforward one at home. You just need a string made out of a natural fiber and a little piece of foam. This uh, metal leaf electroscope is a little bit more involved. You'll read it about it in the text. But what you'll see is it's a, uh, it's a, it's a metal case. It has a glass screen. The glass is there to just prevent wind from blowing onto it. On the top, there's a metal ball that's connected through a metal rod down to the bottom. And on the bottom, there are just these two little metal leaves hanging there, two little sheets of, of thin metal. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the, the purpose of an electroscope is to determine if there's a charge. And so what we can do is rely on the ebonite rod, this fur, and the electrostatic series. So this is from page 405 of your required readings. This is table 10.1. It's called the electrostatic series. Immediately above this in the readings, the paragraph will describe it. But what it's telling you is the, the willingness or the tendency to hold on to electrons. Up here near the top, we have glass and hair. Uh, they have a very weak hold on their electrons, willing to get rid of, or, or sorry, at least willing to let their electrons leave. As we move down to the bottom, we have other objects that are much better at attracting electrons. And I'm going to take a look at two. I'm going to I'm going to use fur and ebonite, and I'm going to charge the ebonite rod by using friction. Okay, and so all that means is I'm just going to take the wool, sorry, the fur. Uh, very high on the electrostatic series, the fur, and the ebonite rod, very low on the electrostatic series, and just rub the two together. So I'm just going to rub the two, I sort of spin them a little bit, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to uh, use friction. So I'm just rubbing the two together. Uh, I'm just holding on to the fur with my other hand and just sliding the, the, the rod back and forth. Okay, just adding some, some friction between the rod and the fur. Now, I can sort of check to see what's happening there. If, if the camera will, will be kind enough and sort of focus, you might see the, the fur. It's, it's trying to focus. The fur can sort of move with the rod. You might ask yourself, why is that the case? And then just for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to give this as, as good of a charge as possible. And one way I can test it is actually put it up to my ear. And my body is a conductor. I can hear the spark. So I know there's a charge on there. But I can't do that now. And maybe what I want to do is keep my elbows off the table. Give it a nice little rub, some friction, and I've got my, my rod here. Um, and I'm wondering, do I have a charge on my rod? And maybe I can look at the hair over there. That helps me understand a little bit about the charge. But let's look at the electroscopes. The pith ball electroscope over here. Can you see it move? It wants something. Okay, so you might ask yourself about the pith ball. What kind of charge does it have? Or is it neutral? Right? We didn't charge the pith ball, it was neutral. And notice that it's attracted. It's attracted to the charged object. I don't know what the charge is. Um, we can determine what the charge is, but notice a neutral object, the pith ball, attracted to the charged object, the ebonite rod. Um, if I wanted to know the charge, I can rely on my activity series, the electro, uh, electrostatic series rather, not the activity series. So in the electrostatic series, I'll notice the ebonite rod is down near the bottom. Very strong a tendency to hold on to the electrons. And I want to remember that electrons are negatively charged. And so because I've used ebonite and fur, the ebonite at the bottom, the ebonite rod here has lots of electrons negatively charged. The neutral object doesn't care what kind of charge, just simply that it is charged. And so negative charge attracting this neutral, neutrally charged pith ball, this pith ball without a charge. 
Now the metal leaf electroscope on the other side here, I'm going to have to adjust the, the stand here a little bit so you can see it. Um, all that I really want to do is, I'm going to do a few things first. Bring my rod near the, 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 the top here. Oh, and I touched it. Maybe I need to charge it. Let's charge it again. Okay, I think what I've done is hit my, my elbows on the ground. So I'm just going to charge it up again, return more electrons to the ebonite rod. I know the electrons go to the ebonite rod, the black rod, because of the electrostatic series. Now let's see what we can do here. Oh, there we go. Ah, okay, so I've got the charge on that rod in a particular place, right, where I was rubbing it because the rod's a good insulator, it's not going to allow the charge to move. Oh, and I hope you saw that. So notice here that the leaves are separated. Why would those leaves separate? What is on the rod? And then after I've touched the electroscope, what's now in the electroscope? And how do those charges feel? And where could they go? And why would it cause these two objects to, to push away or repel from one another? I think those are all really good questions that you want to ask yourself and start to think about. You may want to consider the fact that the ebonite rod, lots of electrons, this object was originally neutral, and now uh, we've got these leaves being pushed away or repelled from each other. So why would those two leaves be pushed away? What's in them now that's causing them to move away from one another? And if I wanted to undo that situation and neutralize the object, I can use my body. My body is a good conductor. And what I'm doing is allowing all those electrons to leave the, those, those metal leaves and leave this metal pole. The electrons flow into my body. I'm a good conductor. And the electrons will head from me into the ground through my feet or through a metal pipe that I'm going to go touch just to ground myself. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, of course, please let me know. Uh, just a brief look at um, ebonite rods and charging by friction and the value of two different uh, electroscopes. Here is the pith ball electroscope and then the uh, metal leaf electroscope. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Stay safe, everyone.